democracy in our families that is healthy and incredible and life-giving and hopeful. Amen. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to, now I'm suddenly feeling I'm a shift in a different direction. Okay, give me a second. I just want to read something here. Um, right, I'm in a shift in a direction. Okay, so because we are talking about life and practicalities, I was going to share a psalm with you that God really spoke to me this morning, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to move into a different space, if that's okay, and I'm going to read to you something from Luke 10. You'll all have heard this story before, and um, my intention is not to preach to you this morning, it's to have a conversation. So I just, but I just want to just bear with me, just set the scene and talk about um, how sometimes our activity can create anxiety. Um, and it's not necessarily only the atmosphere of the world around us that is, um, there is an atmosphere of anxiety, but sometimes the things and the decisions we choose can, um, can really, um, increase anxiety within us. And I think we need to be mindful of that in this season, in an already anxious a season and in a season where people are feeling greater anxiety because of external pressure we don't want to then um, make that worse within our homes because of the decisions that we're making amen okay so we are reading from luke 10 and the story is mary and martha I always tend to feel quite um empathetic with martha you know people have really given her a bad rap you know, you know, poor Martha, the one who does everything, and then Mary just so holy sits at Jesus' feet and um, just receives, you know, like, go Mary. And poor Martha gets, you know, for the, all of time, she's going to be remembered as the one who didn't sit at the feet of Jesus and actually take hold of his truth. So let's just spare a thought for Martha. But listen, we don't want to be Martha. That's... Um, can I get an amen? We don't want to be Martha in this season. You know, bless her. But the whole point of Jesus sharing this story is so that, um, or the whole point of Luke sharing this story with us is so that we would learn something, that we would see Jesus within the scripture and see something within the thread of humanity and use it to shape something within us going forward so we don't keep perpetuating the same realities. And so... It says, um, as Jesus and his disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha. So, hello, Martha's amazing. She's the one that welcomes Jesus in. So, can we just all take a moment to go, Martha, you're actually awesome. Okay? Yes. Her name was Martha, and she had a sister named Mary. Here's the thing. Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. But Martha, everyone say, but Martha, became exasperated by finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, my beloved Martha. I want you to hear this very clearly this morning. I feel the voice of our Savior, our precious Jesus, says this morning, put your name there, Tess, my beloved Tess. Wins, my beloved ends. Nande, my beloved Nande, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away by all these many distractions? Are they really that important? Mary has discovered one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She's undistracted and I won't take this, priv this privilege from her. And so Mary is attentive. She's hungry. She has a seated posture, one of rest, one of um, trust. Martha is exasperated and frustrated. She's living in a hurried existence, trying to please everyone around her. The actual words in the Passion Translation say household chores. Household chores. That's what she was distracted by, all the household chores. And what I wanted to say to you know, Martha was distracted by many things. And what it produced in her was anxiety. 
Mary focused on one thing and she experienced supernatural peace. She could sit at the feet of Jesus and just receive undistracted by her surroundings. And the product of that was peace. But Martha was distracted by many things and the product of that was anxiety. And I feel that, that God is wanting to say to us as his girls, you know, focus on one thing. There are many things. There are many things that need to be done. There are many people that need, need to be attended to. There are many distractions. But choose to focus on one thing. It is the thing that is going to get us through in the season. A cleaner house is not going to take us through to the other side and make us more whole and strong. Children who have been perfectly educated with all the online things and all the work handed in and all the things in a row are not going to get us through the season whole and full of peace. Scrambling to get the work done to meet the the demands, external demands, are not going to get us through this season. They're not. They're important and they're worthwhile and we should sow into our children and we should sow into our marriages and we should, we should invest in our workplaces and be our best selves in every area that we find ourselves. But the one thing that Jesus calls us to is himself. He's calling us to himself. And that is what is going to take us through to the other side. That is what is going to produce a tenacious army in the church that, that walks out of the season with like some bruises and scars and, you know, a few war wounds. But actually, we're going to be an army. He's taking the dry bones and he's, and he's creating an army. And, and we're being called to incredible things in this very season but there are so many distractions and I, I believe that these distractions are causing us to lose our way not the necessarily this season of the coronavirus that is not what is causing us to lead, uh, lose our way or lose ourselves what's calling us to um, what's going to get us through in this season is Jesus. So yes, girls, listen, what I'm saying to you is you can have a dirty house for one day in Jesus' name. Like, so these are some of the things I wanted to just talk to. You know, I, I'm staying in a house probably t one and a half times bigger than what we are used to at home. It's impossible to clean. I tried. For many days, I've tried. And I a few days ago, I woke up and I watched Joel frustrated because I couldn't, you know, I was trying to vacuum over watching him. I, I watched as, as things just got complicated because I was frustrated with everyone all over the place trying to, you know, making a mess and I don't like the sandy floor and, you know, all the things. And I just had to stop myself in that moment and say, hmm is this really important? Is this really important right now? Put some slops on and walk over the sand. For goodness sake, woman. Like, is the vacuuming going to make this better? Is this going to make me stronger on the other side? You know? Is, is moaning at everybody for leaving their stuff around all the time going to produce anything worthwhile in the long run? The only one frustrated and more anxious in the home is me. So... Anyway, that was just my little epiphany. And, and you know what, I like a clean house, whatever. It's, it's who I am. But it's just not that important. It's just not that important. And so I kind of got to this point where I just thought, you know what, okay. Every day I ask myself, I get up in the morning and I ask myself this question. And this one I want to encourage you. What is most important today? What is most important today? We know that the most important one thing is Jesus. He's calling us to himself. Really, he is. And so the most important thing we can do is to find ways to be with him. And that can look very different for all of us. For me, that can look like hanging up the washing. It can. Engaging with God as I do, uh, 
you know, a menial task. It can look like taking a time out to what, just sit in front of Joel as he plays, but at the same time pray and intercede for the season and really ask the Holy Spirit to just be with me in the mundanity of the moment. It's to be more present and, oh, that's amazing. And it's, it's, just, to, it's just to be with him. So that's the most important thing. And then it's okay, well, what's next? What's the next most important thing? Is it a clean house? Is today the day where I should clean? Is, should we do like a group cleanup? Should we, um, is, is, you know, some more creative meals more important? Is the planning of that more important? Um, do I need to focus more on the school aspect today? Um, who, which child do I need to check in with? Who's needing a little bit more of me? Who needs a moment? Maybe it's a walk around our little secret garden and a chat. Who's needing some, who's needing a Zoom call with their friends I could set up? Um, you know, it's just to ask myself, what's most important? What's most important for today? Because I can tell you now, a clean house is not important every day. So for those of you scrambling around, trying to keep the homes in tip-top condition for who knows who, I want to just say, girls, we need to focus. We need to focus in the season. And we cannot be all things to all people. We cannot be um, doing all the things, hoping that we're going to walk through the season, get to the other side, um, without feeling burnt out, frustrated, completely overwhelmed, and um, uh, almost ruined in our souls because we're so exhausted. And there is a reality if we are not taking care of ourselves that we can, we can really, um, we can find ourselves in that position. So yes, there's a permission to step over the mess. There's a permission to not you know, pick up the toys every five minutes. There's permission to get our families involved. Give people tasks. Give, empower our children to actually be more independent. I mean, I got here and I was like, how do my children not know how to t make toast? Like, what have I done to them? It is an injustice that they can't do things on their own. It's just, it needs to change. And so, judge me if you want, but the reality is, is like my eyes have been opened to some things that need to change. I need to empower my children. They can do stuff and they need to do stuff. They are, they are brilliant minds and they are capable and God has gifted them and they can't make toast. I'm like, oh my gosh, let's teach you how to cook some things. Let's teach you how to look after yourself. Let's teach you how to work a washing machine. Let's, let's do things together so that you can walk out of the season more empowered than when you came in. And so, goodbye, Martha. Amen, Debs. I love that. We're saying goodbye to Martha. Bless her, but goodbye. Oh, my word. Because, honestly, the Martha mentality produces anxiety. And I just want to say, like, I, I've, I have enough anxiety around this season. I do not need that exacerbated because I don't know how to pace myself and figure out what's most important right now. Um, and I get it, certain things need to be cleaned often. I'm not saying don't clean your toilets because you don't feel like cleaning. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, don't be gross, but just be wise. <laughs> Let's hashtag that, don't be gross, be wise. Seriously, there's so many, there's so much to be done and we cannot do it all. And so let's, let's choose, let's make wise decisions every day. What does it look like for us to ask ourselves the question, what is most important? What is most important? And we know that scripture tells us that Jesus is the one thing. He's the one thing. So let's. First and foremost, figure out how to be with him. How to commune with him in this season that's busy and crazy and frenetic at times. Let's be with him. And then, let's figure out what's next. Let's figure it out. God has given us brilliance. He's given us wisdom. He's given us 
ability to make good decisions every day and to then pace ourselves through what's needed. And who knows what could be found on the other side. I just love how, you know, what could be found on the other side of the season if we, we choose the spirit of Mary as an attentive and hungry and seated posture, one of rest and one of um, peace. Because there's not much of that to be found. And I think we're going to come out of this. We're going, to, um, we're going to resume life. It'll look different, but we will resume life, everyday, ordinary life. And I don't know if I want to be seen as the frenetic, anxious, burnt out one. I want to be the one that's calm and hopeful. And ha because I'm not like hurrying around doing all the things, I have enough resource within me to pour out and speak life and truth and be something that the world desperately needs in this season. The world doesn't need more women who know how to clean their homes. Amen. I'm preaching to myself here. The world needs women who know how to do hard and holy things. And hard and holy things are not cleaning toilets. It's not um, coming up with a new meal. It's not educating our children from home. Although those things are all great. Hard and holy things means getting doing business with Jesus. It means having souls that are at rest and at peace. It means finding faith when the chips are down. And I know we all have it within it, within us, as the woman of the of of the world. I keep wanting to say the nation, but then there's just so many nations watching these days. I'm like international tea with tears. I love that. Um, but the reality is, is your nation needs women who know how to do hard things, who know how to navigate seasons well, and know how to come through on the other side without being burnt out and frustrated and disillusioned and this season is it is hard it is hard but there is a holiness that's being that's being found within the season there is there is a holiness it's because we're in the fire we are on a fire. And it's, it's refining something very pure and very precious within us. That's what it's doing. And that, that, that process is painful, but it's beautiful and it's necessary. And it is going to produce something for the generations and generations and generations that will follow us. It's going to show our daughters and our sons what it means to be a strong and tenacious and formidable woman to trust Jesus. It's going to show our children what it means to pray, to trust, to choose to live beyond our emotion, to make good decisions for our family. I think that's some of the blessing of the season. So yes, girls, there is lots of And I want to be respectful. It's great to have a routine. I know many people who have very solid, structured routines, and that works for their families. I don't think we should throw the baby out of the bathwater. I think some structure is great, and I think um, routines are awesome. But I just want to say this very, very clearly today. Our routines and our structures should not enslave us. Our routines are there to serve our homes. If the routine that you've put in place in your home for your family is keeping you a slave to something, that is not what God intends for you. He does not intend for you to be enslaved to anything. And so if you, your routine is keeping you in a confined and enslaved space, my encouragement to, to you would be to rework things so that your routine serves your family and that may look like going school is on hold right now so that i can do a zoom chat with my whoever or my business or my friends school is on hold now so that i can engage the sisterhood online and i tell them my kids that like you're welcome to carry on but i am not available to you in this moment 
I'm doing something that is important for me and important for the church and it, it is something I believe in. And they, it's so good that they see that. It's so good that they see that their, their mother is passionate about many things and beautiful things and that, that gives them permission to pursue something good that God puts in them. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And so I really want to encourage you to go and have a look today at the routine that you've put in place. Perhaps it's just too much. Perhaps it's tiring you out. Perhaps it's, um, perhaps it's tiring your kids out. Yes. So I hope that was encouraging. I don't feel like it was incredibly profound or new, but the reality is... There are many questions that we need to be asking ourselves in this season, and I want to encourage you to ask the right questions. Listen to the, listen to the right people, because there's so much out there. There's so many voices that you can take hold of telling you to do all the things in the season. You should become an author. You should become the next best chef. Why don't we all just like give up our lives to bake? Hold the phone. Okay. Seriously. No one even likes baking or like very few people like baking and suddenly we're all like these crazy bakers. What the heck? Uh, I don't know. Is it only me freaking out about the incessant baking? Oh my gosh. Okay.